Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. If you're new or welcome back if you're not. So for today's video, I'm doing a what's in my brush belt video. If you missed the last video, I will link it up here and that was a what's in my kit. So I went through um, what I carry from my professional makeup kit and how I set up, how I use my kit bag. And as like a part two to that, I'll be giving you an overview of what's in my professional brush belt. So if you want to have a little look through my brush belt, then just keep watching. So this is my brush belt that I use um, when I'm working on clients. And these are the brushes that I currently use and this is the way I currently set it up. Although I do have kind of an itch at the moment to switch out some of my brushes um, to get like some, a couple of new maybe face powder brushes and to switch out some of my um, foundation brushes. Just the ones that I don't really use that much and are kind of taking up space when they could be more useful brushes to me I think. But I'll just go through what I use at the moment. So this is the Sedona Lace brush belt that zips up all the way around the side. So I can close it up like this and it's quite full, but I can get it, get it closed and I zip all around the side so that my brushes won't fall out if I'm traveling. And then if you saw my what's in my kit video, you will have seen um, that when I work for my studio, I have all my products laid out on the table. So I'll have my brush belt laid out. And then when I was showing my case that I use for on callouts, I also mentioned that I'll either have it kind of just set up and laid out or if I'm really tight on space, I'll actually wear it. So I'll use the, the belt part of it and have it around my waist to save space. So just to start with the extra bits here, there's a little slot here for business cards. So I have a few of those in there. Um, I have a beauty blender squeezed in there and a powder puff in the front there. So at the front, these are just large open pockets. So you can pop in extra bits like that. Um, in the middle, I will keep mascara ones and maybe a few cotton buds. And then down the center, I have two spatulas. So I'll start on this side. Um, at the back, I kind of keep my bigger face brushes and then towards the front, I'll keep my smaller brushes. So at the back here, I have my face powder brushes. This one actually came from a really cheap set from Fraulein and most of the brushes in it, I didn't like and I didn't um, keep or just use them for like special effects and stuff, but this one actually works well. It's a nice, nice kind of large, medium size. This is one from Crown that I really like. It's one of my favorite powder brushes. Um, it's a synthetic powder brush with a nice kind of um, taper to it, but like a rounded top rather than a pointed uh, tulip shape. That's kind of my go-to one. Like if they're all clean, that's the one I'll reach for first. This one, I think again, is from Crown. I don't have the, um, yeah, the name has gone off it, but it's like a thicker one. It's more um, densely packed, I should say. So it's great for packing on powder um, and great for like chiseling out cheekbones with a bit of contour. This is my MAC 168, another one of my favorite powder brushes. So I'll use it for like setting powders all over. And um, of course it's that angle shape, so it's nice for contour. And then I'll also use the body of it for um, blush. And if I want to, I can use just the very corner of it for um, a little bit of highlight. Then in the last slot along, I have two brushes popped in together. Sorry if you can hear growling in the background, that's my dog. So these I use for highlighting. Um, Again, I'm sure they're from Crown and the names have rubbed off them, they used to be on it. But this one is like a large, like a large fluffy shadow brush. And that is kind of my go-to highlight brush. And then this one is like a little, um, a little mini, mini angled one, but it has a nice flat surface to it. So then those are all in slots in the back and I have some brushes in slots in the front. And there's actually a middle section in between those, which again is like open like this. So I'll kind of slot in some extras that aren't really my go-tos, but when I'm doing a lot of faces, I need a lot of like extra brushes. So these are all the brushes that I had slotted into that kind of middle section. So I have this extra um, powder brush. It's a B2 blush from, I can't think of what brand it's from, but if I think of it, I'll, I'll put it in the blog post. And it works fine. It's just a little bit, um, a little bit small and dense for like an all over powder, but it works grand for like contour and blush. Then I have um, this B1 angled brush. So this is a nice um, angled one, but it's more um, like say floppy than the 168 from MAC. So again, it's just better for like more precise kind of contouring and blush or just like precision powder. Then I have this one is C407 Jumbo Shadow from Crown. So it's like a really big thick eyeshadow brush, but I will use this for highlighting. So basically that's just in the middle because I couldn't fit it in the back row. But I do reach for that a lot as well. Then I have some extra eyeshadow brushes, um, just a blending one and a kind of fluffy flat one. This one is a, um, a C441 from Crown and this one is a eyeshadow blend and contour from number seven. So those are some spare eye brushes. And then I have a spare synthetic blending brush. It's just a little bit smaller than I generally like, but it's um, good for like cream products on the eyes or um, precision concealing. So then along the front row, the way I have it kind of worked out is in this pouch are 
like precision crease brushes, flat brushes for the lid, and more fluffy blending brushes, and then blending synthetic brushes for concealer. And then I have a spoolie. So we'll say in this first pouch, this one I, I believe is from Royal and Langnickel, but it's just a really thin um, crease brush, but it's still nice and fluffy. It's not too dense. You can get a nice blend with it. And that's one of my favorite ones. These are two 10S brushes from Inglot. So again, they're longer and thinner, but they are that bit more dense and stiffer. So they're good for like packing on color into the outer V. And you can use smaller motions to blend those edges out. This is a Sedona Lace um, EB15. So it's like a little tulip shaped brush. And this is like a larger um, kind of version of that tulip shape. Um, again, I'm not sure where this one is from. So those are my precision crease brushes or like outer V brushes or for like say blending out and buffing out stuff under the eye. And then these are my um, lid brushes. So just flat eyeshadow brushes basically. This one is um, from Fraulein I think and it's actually really nice. It's really soft and fluffy but not too um, flimsy. These two are very similar. One is just a longer handle but they're both just like firm flat shadow brushes. And then again another flat brush. This one is just kind of thicker and denser. So it's great for packing on like say a light cream color on the lid. Then these would be my go-to um, blending brushes. This one again I'm not sure where it's from but it's just a round nice fluffy brush. This one is a Sedona Lace EB09. So it's that kind of pinched ferrule. So I can use it in a few different ways. And then these are both 6SS's from Inglot. But these have gotten a lot um, more rounder in shape and fluffier over time. These were part of my um, brush belt when I worked in Inglot. So I used them an awful lot and they kind of went into this shape that I like. But when you actually get them first, they're much more tapered and pointed. Just in case you were interested in them, they um, don't look like this when you get them. So these have just been well loved into that kind of a shape. And these are little fluffy synthetic brushes that I will use for concealer. So these two are actually the same brush. Um, I think they're from the synthetic collection from Crown. This one is from Crown, it's a C457 round blender. This one is much more um, thicker and denser, kind of along the lines of the um, those Sigma ones, the small concealer Sig Sigma ones, but a little bit more given them, which I actually prefer. And then this one is a Sedona Lace EB13. That's This is probably my go-to concealer one because it is nice and fluffy. It's not too um, thin. Sometimes these are a little bit thin. It's nice and fluffy and has a good amount of give to it. So then moving along to this side, um, in the back, I have my foundation brushes. So I have two buffing brushes from Real Techniques. I quite like a buffing style brush. So I have two of those. I then have a flat foundation brush, which I don't tend to use a lot. It depends on the foundation I'm using and stuff, but um, generally I prefer one that I can buff. But I do have a flat one. Um, I also have a stippling brush, which again, I don't tend to use a whole lot, so I might switch those out for more um, buffing style ones. And then on the end, I have two smaller ones. This one is the contour brush from Real Techniques, and actually I've been loving this one for foundation recently, so I might pop another one of those in there. And this one is a Crown C517, and I find this really good for like blending out um, concealer or cream contour and things. It's just that nice little size and it's a nice rounded shape. Then again, in the center, I have some extra brushes. So I'll pop those out. So I have the Real Techniques Expert Face Brush. This one I do quite like, but um, the bottom of it is actually quite thick, so it doesn't really fit into the slots. So that's why I have it in that kind of big pocket in the middle. But I do quite like that one. I just wish it was a little bit more uh, brush belt friendly. I have a little lash fan, just in case I run out of mascara ones, I can use this. I have a little mini stippling brush, which I will get use out of every now and then. For like a light powdering, blending out say cream blush, that kind of thing. I have this um, flat, or it's called the pointed foundation brush from Real Techniques. I don't tend to use this one a whole lot because again, it's a flat style, but it's also so small that I might use it for popping on like a cream contour um, or cream highlight and things, but it's not fluffy enough to be able to blend with it. So I might change that one as well. This one is another small little flat style but it's more of like a concealer style one and I might use this for like carving out the lid with concealer and this is like a little lip brush but what I tend to use it for um, lately is glitters and pigments and things so then onto these front pockets here so then onto these um, front pockets and the way I kind of have those laid out is lips brows liner and then these are like um, say very precise eye brushes for like under eye and things 
which this one could actually go in with these but there was this extra little pouch here and it kind of only fits one or two brushes but this one is my my favorite under eye brush so I just put it on its own there and this is the crown c528 so it's a really small um little blender brush basically it's slightly tapered but it's still nice and fluffy so you get a nice soft blend with it so that has its own little pocket there for the moment anyway and these ones again are nice precise ones so I have this little one when I first got this I didn't think I'd use it at all but it's just a little angled um kind of flat shadow brush but it's perfect just for using that angle to go under the lower lash line it's that nice size um, and it's not too small and dense that I'll get like a really harsh line but it's just precise enough that it won't be too um, blended if I want to kind of get a nice dense color I have this um, nice dense pencil brush and I like this because it's not too pointed like um, a bullet or kind of a small tulip brush it has that slightly rounded top so again I can kind of pack on but also blend out then I have this little one from Inglot it's a 13p and this one is great for packing on um, colour, say, right at the base of the lash roots because it is quite precise, quite small and quite dense. This one is a similar shape, but um, much thinner. So it looks like the Inglat one, but it's a lot thinner on the side. So again, um, for very precise, uh, say, like base of the lash roots shadow or else for like packing on shadow over a liner. And then again, these are super detailed brushes. This is the Inglot 32 t So it's a really tiny little pointed um, synthetic brush. So I'd use that for like um, cut creases or anything like really detailed that I want really sharp. And this is like this little tiny, it's even like a little short handle, but it's this tiny little um, brush. You can hardly like even see the shape to it. It's actually slightly tapered, slightly pointed, but it's like a really, really, really mini smudger. For again lower lash line cut crease anything really detailed then these brushes are what i use for liner so i'll have some straight brushes and some angled brushes so i have two inglass 23 t's so that's their straight liner brush and this one is actually a create um number one brush so it's actually a paint brush but it's basically a straight liner brush and then i have some angled brushes i don't use these for like gel but i'll use them for going over my gel with some black shadow so this one is really, really thin. This one is kind of a medium and this one is a bit thicker, but they're all just little shadow angle brushes. And then my favorite brow brush is the Inglot 31 Tees. So I have three of those and it's a synthetic angled brush, but they're super, super fine, really thin. So I can get nice sharp lines with that if I'm using um, either a gel or a powder, whatever I'm using. And then I have little one small little um, random um angle brush that i actually will sometimes use for brows because it's kind of nice and stubby so it doesn't like splay out or anything and then finally we have lip brushes so i have two um cat lip brushes here one of them is from this one is the sedone lace one it's a little bit more rounded and then this one will be from inglash that's a 12s i believe the number is rubbed off but i think it's a 12s it's just a little bit more pointed and i have this random little synthetic one it's kind of a short and stubby one it's good for smaller lips if i'm being more precise and then this is the detailer brush from real techniques so this one is a little bit thicker a little bit bigger but it just depends on the person's lip shape but it does work really well as a lip brush or it also works well for popping on um, glitters and pigments so i'll just pop these back in the front here and that is basically all the brushes that i'll carry for my kit as I said, I'll probably do some switching up, but um, this has done me for quite a while. And if you're just starting, you don't need kind of as many, but I like to have a number of like, say the same kind of brushes so that when I am doing multiple faces, I don't have to do so much cleaning in between. But even if you had kind of one of each of the kind of brush you need, you can just kind of spot clean in between. So that is it for my what's in my brush belt video. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you found it interesting. Again, if you missed my last two videos, which were my what's in my kit, so my uh, makeup products for my professional kit and my studio tour, then do check those out. And in this little series, I will also have a full makeup collection video as well as a run through of my personal brush collection. So stay tuned for those as well. So that's it for me for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one. Bye guys.